So you all have work uh, with the posters for the exhibit, and uh, you're meeting Mrs. Swanson, the artist, for the first time, I believe, as a for of you. And uh, so I'm very curious um, what questions you may have for the artist. So we're going to transition in this part of the program that I call Ask the Artist. <laughs> and um, so would any of you like to start? I had a question about your medium, which you kind of answered during your talk. But um, is there a diff is there a difference to what medium you choose for different purposes, like crayon versus printing? Well, is that okay? I'll jump in. Uh, the crayon was just because I, that's how I began. That those were old works, and I was just taking and recycling them. There was no purpose. I, I don't have a, a purpose when I, when, like I might get an old uh, silk screen. Uh, I did photo, some photo silk screens with Moibridge with the figures in motion. I don't know, some of you might know it. It's like before move film and they had figures moving and the camera was taking each shot and I turned them into uh, serographs. And so no one's ever seen them. And so I thought, well, I'm going to make a poster. Uh, I made one with Martin Luther King's quote on violence and nonviolence, and then another one with a quote from Corita, my teacher, that said, there's no rules about leaping into the new, for no one has been there before. Mm -hmm. And there's a figure jumping. You see the figure jumping over. Uh, and then um, I'm taking art from pieces that are real complex and then dropping them in uh, to make like the one that you that was chosen about the um, Mother Earth and um, it, it's all on it, I'm using every trick in the trade as they say I mean not that not that facile but I'm I'm, I'm not restrained by any kind of technique um, for that poster specifically, were the bees added to it after the bee poster, or was the bee poster an extension no, of No, the that? bee poster's from another work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little drawing, and then some people wanted to make a talk on bees, and uh, the, uh, the, a man that makes candles, and he wanted to talk about the plight of the bees, and how important it is even in, in, in the liturgy, in the Catholic liturgy, uh, for Easter, uh, Easter Saturday, the, the Saturday before Easter. Anyway, um, so I, I just, I told him I'll make you a, a poster or an image, and I painted it, and I thought, well, uh, and then I just carried that, and then I took that image and dropped it in, because it's about Mother Earth. Like I have a one of Sister Water, and it's from a another artwork. You know, I keep borrowing it and reusing it, but you wouldn't be able to know uh, because one was a miniature and then I make it bigger and put words about water and taking care of water, especially after De Detroit and Flint. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess one, I think for me like a main sort of theme that I get from your artwork, it seems to be religion and, and spirituality. I, I know the first one had, was like Noah's Ark, and the picnic sort of made me think of like Last Supper sort of thing. How would you say like um, religion and spirituality influence your artwork? How it started, look at, I, I started out, I had no background in art. When I, when I took the class in lettering, I thought, uh, you know, I'm just going to do lettering. These are going to be political posters. I'm going to make posters out of the, all these alphabets that I'm learning about. And so, uh, and the only uh, art that I really knew as a kid, I, I, we lived in this small town, but fortunately they had very good, uh, some interesting art. They're one of the ch churches that I went to had a, a beautiful, a drawing of the crucifixion, but it was a large one, but it was a drawing, and it had one of uh, wards. And then there was a, another church close by, a Mexican church, that had a, a very flowery and elaborate, and they, the artist had come and painted Our Lady Guadalupe. And then another one, not too far, had the Stations of the Cross, and they had brought 
uh, Byzantine artists from the Vatican, and, uh, or artists from the Vatican that could do Byzantine art. And I used to work in a gas station, and sometimes I'd stop by a church, and it had two murals by these women, two women that uh, they're well known. They built churches all over Los Angeles, and I used to go and look at them because they were so beautiful, and I could relate to them. And one was the um, raising of Lazarus, and the other was the uh, the loaves and the fishes. So art, the religious art seemed to be part of all what I, I understood as art uh, because it was going coming from things that I felt and things that I could share with others that are, were around me. Uh, but it wasn't that I wanted to do religious art, it was just part of who I was. But, um, thank you. I did libraries and operas <laughs> and orchestras but I, I don't know, I think all in art there's a lot of uh, the sacred is in all art. I, I don't know. If, I mean, we're when we're being creative, it's it's part of a, like a spirituality. In making films, when you make your documentaries, there there's a spiritual element to it. I'm sure because it's you. So one of the more unique features about your posters is that you include quotations. Um, and you talked about this a little bit, but how do you um, how do you pick what words you want to use, or who inspires you, or what inspires you to pick the certain quotations that you do? Well, it, it can be from mo uh, like periodicals, or if it's a theme or like a subject, and then I'll start looking at it. Like especially the Laudati C, which is the the uh, encyclical on the environment. And uh, that had wonderful quotes. In fact, one interesting thing, I went to give a talk at uh, Westwood uh, Presbyterian Church, and they said, we want you to give a talk on all your posters. <laughs> and so then I, I was really excited. And so I had, the, I had them all up, and I gave the talk, and then, this, and then I said, I don't know why, I said, do you have any uh, comments or questions, and then this man raised his hand and he said, "I didn't want to come to this talk. My wife forced my wife forced me to come over, and I was there. And I thought, oh gosh, what do I say? I said, your wife must be really nice. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, but I thought well, I'll make a comment. But then he said, yeah, but I really liked it. This was great. I'm so glad I came over. <laughs> And then I felt real good, and then I said, yeah, your wife is really wonderful. <laughs> but then uh, this man came over, because I was trying to explain Laudate Si, you know, the, that's the encyclical, it means uh, uh, praise, uh, praise God for, uh, for the earth. It's uh, based on the uh, quote, or the prayer, the canticle of St. Francis. Uh, anyway, um, he, he, this man came over and told me, well, you, we know about Laudate Si, because I was trying to explain what it was. And they said, we read it as a church. And I was so impressed, because I, I know so many Catholics don't even know what it is. Uh, so, but, so, I, so I went to Laudate Si, and I found really good quotes, quotes that would be universal. What I try to find in the, in the writing, it, it isn't for any particular religion, but I want to reach a wider audience and see that we are, how we can work together as, as one group of people, a common humanity, rather than separate. As a child, I always felt like there was all this separation and people fighting each other. And so today, I think it's a whole different time now. We don't have much time to take care of things. So we have to work together. That's why I got, uh, so I'm, I'm just choosing, I don't know, it, it's hard to tell. It's like sometimes you read something really beautiful and you know that's got to be in a picture. How has your background influenced your style and the messages that you want to get across to your audience? Well, as I told you, we didn't, I don't know anything about background because my dad left us and so he wasn't around too much. And he was Swedish, so there was no, really not a community of Swedes where we lived. 
so he was by himself. He was kind of isolated. But my mom, because of, of being Mexican, and she knew a lot of people, and she knew English, and so she could do a lot. She was, uh, uh, I think the thing that, uh, that they were, both of them told stories, and I think the storytelling in our, in the childhood is what influenced me, you know, the idea of telling a story. And I remember I couldn't read very well, and my mom said, and I was reading comic books, and she said, well, you've got to read something better. And so she bought, she started buying these classic comic books, and they were the great uh, novels on the great books of the, you know, the 19th century turned into like um, graphic novels. And that were, they were graphic novels of the time. And then I started reading them and I started to really like them. So she got me to read a little bit deeper at level than Archie. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the style, I don't know if my background had a, a style. I'm, I'm sure they, it did, but I can't remember. <laughs> That was a long time ago, <laughs> 80 years ago. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I'm curious uh, as to like what you're up to. Are you still continuing making these similar style posters or uh, what interests you now? Well, I still want to do the posters because, uh, as I say, uh, like the last one was I uh, called the um, Stop the Violence of Climate Change. And I took an old artwork that I had done, the, one of the first pi pictures in its A Peaceable Kingdom. Oh, uh, um, Sylvia, could you run and grab your poster? Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, but I'm still trying, but uh, there's a lot been going on. No, the other side. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Oh. It, it was a, a picture, it's a crayon painting. Later on, uh, you could see it. I, ga I gave them each their poster that they chose <laughs> as a gift. And also on the other side, my newest one, it's called the, the Violence of Climate Change. And it has a quote from an echo theologian named Thomas Berry, who died about eight years ago. And uh, thank you. Uh, well, I keep thinking, well, maybe I should give up and let the next generation take over and stop hogging the show. But uh, then I, I did another one. Um, if you look inside the, the exhibition, there's one of St. Francis looking into the water, and there's a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh that says, um, uh, go inside yourself and listen to the cry of the earth. And so then I put um, a picture of St. Francis looking into the pond of water, and, uh, and 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 then I decided to make it as a larger work, and I went back and repainted it as a, as a more finished work. It was from 1985, the poster. And uh, I, well, I don't know how to answer. I I think I try what I I keep going, but I'm not sure how effective they are. As, they, as one gets older. <laughs> Take over. <laughs> Take over with your uh, film. Oh, the other thing that influenced was more as I got older and I got to see more art. Uh, but then I started, and then also having someone like a teacher like Corita who told us there are no, um, there's, uh, there's no rules. It's uh, you break every rule you can, and uh, I can't remember the other one that she said. Oh, it was a really good one. Uh, everything, consider everything you do an experiment, and uh, there's no good or bad when you're doing your artwork. When you're being creative, it's it's all about work and doing the work. And so she empowered me as a person because I was afraid, being dyslexic and having. I'm left-handed, not unable to do very well in anything, and having someone open the door, and then I started going, and then it took a long time. Uh, it's 51 years, but it was like struggling from nothing to today, and um, 
Okay. So, it, but I think film and seeing things and, and meeting people that were creative and that opened doors and were doing something special it helped me a lot. Dance, uh, performance, uh, uh, plays, operas, uh, orchestras, everything, when you see the creative spirit moving people, it, it, it's what influenced me. And documentaries are very important in my life, so keep carry on with the documentaries. <laughs> well, you know when you related to us um, about what Karita said, that art is an experiment, there's no good or bad or real wrong, and I wonder if it's kind of like, that's kind of deep, and I thought, about, what was kind of like life, you know? But she didn't say there's no good or bad, but she said that it's when you're creating, it's it don't be trying to analyze it and say is this good or is this bad, but it's it's all about work, and that's what I did is I threw all my heart into my work and did and worked as hard as I could. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's very inspiring. Yeah, I told me to do places just now. <laughs> um, any other questions before I open? The so you mentioned that you've been making these for a long time. I was wondering, do you have a favorite poster that you've made? I like them all, but, <laughs> but I like the one when they're topical. Like I like the one that, that says, build bridges, not walls. And then also, I, what was the other one? I like the one called a spaceman. And I, it, it's not on the, it's not, it wasn't selected. The man goes to outer space. But we have one after the. If anyone wants to see it, it's based on David Bowie's song, mm -hmm. Space Oddity. Remember that song? Yes. It says ground control to major chum. Do you know that one? Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a story. It's a multi frame, it's a story. But I use the quotes from the cosmonaut and the astronaut and saying, What a beautiful place this Earth is. But we must protect it, we cannot destroy it. You know, they're up in the space looking at the earth. And so I thought that would be good. I mean, it wasn't like a quote from a theologian or anyone, but it was so <laughs> profound today, when you think of the, what we're doing to the earth, that it was it was very, it, to me, it seemed like it, it hit the message. I think you'll like it. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, now let's um, extend our conversation and uh, we'd like to invite comments and questions from the audience to any of our speakers or just... No comments like that man that told me... <laughs> 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 like that man that said, I didn't want to come to this talk. <laughs> I'll bring that mic over. So I was trying to think um, of what your um, kind of cartoon, the kind of the the sequence of images reminded me of, and it reminded me of m some Mexican muralists, and I wondered if you were influenced by that. I looked one up, because I went to Scripps College, and there's a mural there um, by a painter named Martinez, and it, it's the same idea. It's a sequence of paintings on the wall, and they, they look like to be a very similar sort of style of art. I was curious if you were influenced by any Mexican muralists Yes, I, I, I love the Mexican muralists because they uh, dealt with a history of the people and, the, and their murals were accessible to people there in the public buildings. And when I did go to Mexico for an extended visit, I went to visit all the murals I could to see how they were. And I, I loved uh, Diego Rivera and Siqueiros. Mm -hmm. um, but they inspired me to want to do um, better work. Any other questions or comments? Are we always done? <laughs> like me. Mm -hmm. Or are we just too hungry now? <laughs> okay, uh, well, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for coming today. And let's thank our speakers again today.
And I know many of you have already had a chance to look at the exhibition. I want to point out that if you would like to return and spend more time, you're free to do so. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And I'm going to keep the gallery open for a while, too. So if you'd like to have food, enjoy a uh, conversation among yourself, and check it out again, uh, we're open. And uh, oh, just a friendly reminder, no food, no drink inside our gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Always a librarian, I just have to say that. And um, thank you so much, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be with you today. And thank you, everybody, for uh, the presentation, the conversation. It's just so lovely to just be together today. Thank you. Thank you.